Good morning, my friends. It's Nanny. We're going to be talking this morning about a happiness curve. You can't be happy, totally happy all your life. Happiness is circumstantial. It relies on a lot of things, mostly, believe it or not, choices. So we're going to talk about habits of happy people. I think we touched on this before a little bit and the different stages of happiness as life goes on. It's a curve, definitely. And we're going to talk about how you can stay ahead of that. Curve. And it starts off when you're young. Obviously, you are extremely happy and it continues on upward into your teens, your late teens, you have a little rough time there in your mid teens, but then you pull out of it. And happiness depends on friends, what you're doing in life, your home life, how things are going there. And then it still keeps going up. As you get into your twenties, you start thinking about a partner, perhaps marriage, and so it goes. Now, as you're going into your late twenties and thirties, this curve of happiness starts to level off a little bit. What happens is pressure, pressure to succeed in a job, pressure to look good, pressure with your family. Perhaps you have young children. I, I look back on those years of raising young children and I think they were probably my happiest years of all although I've had many happy years since, but I loved raising a family. Yes, there were a lot of ups and downs and worries, but it, it was a very happy time with all the children. Teenage years, we worried a little bit. By now we're in our forties. And at that point, there is definitely a curve starting to go down. It's called midlife, believe it or not the forties. Here's the good news for those of us who have made it over 50. Now we've gotten through our midlife crises. We've survived the mid fifties by now. Most of the kids are on their own. Yeah, we probably suffered a little of the empty nest. I know I did, but I pulled out of it. And the good news is for all of you out there in your mature years is that the happiest years of your life are going to be in your 60s, 70s, and beyond. And the older you get, believe it or not, despite the ravages of age and the wrinkles and all the rest of that, the happier you get. Don't believe it? Well, Moosey and I are very happy. A lot of things in the past, we don't do the same things anymore. We live a more simple life. We do have connections with family. We do have each other. Life is different. We're somewhat healthy. Now, Moosey has some disabilities. I have everything from arthritis to hip pain to various other things too. I've had some falls, but we're probably happier than we've ever been. I've been happy all my life though, when I think about it, and I've learned to cope during the little bit of um, unhappiness that did come and go. Life gets better after 50. So basically what you have to do is find your purpose in life, find a meaningful life. We use these words over and over, but life and happiness is a choice. Take advantage of it and choose to do it. So that's good news, isn't it? So those of you who are still in your fifties, look at what you have to look forward to. Don't give up because life gets better as you age. A lot of the stress of life comes off your shoulders. Believe it or not, the statistics say that those of us in our mature years 
are happier than people in their 20s and 30s. The years 65 to 79 are proven to be the happiest years of all. Now there's a few other statistics and I like these. 70 is the happiest age of all. They call that truly happy. Now some of the do's in the happy area and by do's I mean D-O. Do reach out. Do reach out. Don't sit in a house, feel sorry for yourself, and think that happiness is going to come to you. That won't happen. You really have to create your own happiness. So reach out to people, to family, if that is what you believe. And, and it's true that probably more than 50% of people's happiness does depend on connections with friends and family. So do reach out. Another thing you should do is forgive. Too many people harbor horrible things that people have done to them or said to them or happenings in their life concerning other people or other things that they have blamed for their unhappiness. So do try in your heart to forgive and just accept and let it go. That's the only way that you will attain happiness if you have been wronged by someone is forgiveness. Concentrate on gratitude. Gosh, we talk about this all the time. Acceptance, gratitude, forgiveness. You've got to embrace all those things in order to be happy. You've heard that term, find your bliss. Well, that does contribute to happiness. Your bliss means your passions in life. What do you get excited about? Now, obviously it's family, it's connections, but if you find that you love to read and that what's makes that's what makes you happy then then read if you love to paint find a talent that you have that you never thought you had before maybe it's making other people happy in some ways or other volunteering getting out there now here's more of the don'ts of your happiness as you mature do not worry about the wrinkles because although we can look better, we're not really gonna get rid of those wrinkles as we age. They're still going to be there. But if you don't concentrate on the wrinkles, then think of something else. Don't concentrate on trying to look younger. Try to look, try and think about feeling better and looking better. But forget about those wrinkles. People are gonna love you if you're lovable one way or the other, whether you have wrinkles or not. People say, don't buy things because shopping is not going to make you happy. That's not true. Shopping can make you temporarily happy. It can give you a lift to your day. It doesn't mean buying things. I've always said, whether it's thrifting or shopping, it's more the thrill of the hunt than, every, than anything else. So, so when people say, oh, buying things is not going to make you happy, no, nah, that's not true. Having a day out, whether it's on your own or whether it's with a friend, shopping, thrifting, it's happiness. It's, it's part of your day. It's fulfilling. Now, there's many other passions that you can have. Find them. The habits of a healthy person. You know, once again, I've said this before, it's not rocket science. It's all about your health. If you're not healthy, you're not happy. Well, uh, let me rephrase that. In order to be totally happy, you have to take care of your health. That means diet, exercise, no smoking, minimal alcohol intake, 
so many of the physical things of your body have to be in tune. And especially as you age, health is paramount. So the, the habits of a healthy person start with taking care of your health and your body in all those areas that we all know so much about it, we don't even want to hear anymore. So we're, we're not going to discuss all that. That is a given. Now, happiness also is circumstantial. There are many things that happen to us during our lifetime that will affect your happiness. And you have to learn how to cope with some of these setbacks. Obviously, our lives are not perfect, nor have they been perfect. So coping with these circumstances is definitely a must, and that is mental. Hang in there, take care of your health, make a choice to choose to be happy. Let it all go, acceptance, forgiveness, gratitude, get out there, take care of your health, and you will be a happy, mature person. On Wednesday, I had kind of a philosophical visit with uh, my friend, Father Dave Heaney, um, about a book he has written. And where we got to is, you know, you were a caveman at one time, and now you've gone to this place. And then you look out and you say, well, what the heck am I here for? You know, I get it. I, don't, I got him here, but I don't know why. And he came up with something kind of interesting. He said, what I do is I try to be kind. Well, what does being kind mean, Father? Well, a plumber comes in. He comes into the building. I walk by him. I say, hey, thanks, pal. Or checking out in the, in a, in the, in the supermarket, the, the packer, the packer. You, know, you don't say it yet. But he said, more than that, don't just look at the ground or look in the sky. Look right at the person because I believe you can see their soul and they will see yours and they'll realize it's a real thank you. Thank you. And that's why we're here. That will make you happy. It will make that person happy. And it kind of moves civilization along. That's all I have to add. Now, I know that there are a lot of you out there who have lost your husbands, lost your partners, or have been single for a long, long time. And being happy for you might be more of a struggle in your later years. I read an article of a widow who said it's so much easier to seek out a friendship or advice from other women that are also widowed or who are single. And a lot of that is, I think, probably very good advice. This woman says that most women say you have to choose happiness over sadness, filling your life with other people. Look for the good in life. Join support groups. Prayer. Most women say keep pushing forward and look for the positive. Try and fill the voids with hobbies and friendships and definitely keep the connections in your life of people that you've had before. I actually came across some really quirky statistics. Uh, one statistic I would like to read to you, some of these suggestions, and they're suggestions as to some of the things you could possibly do to be happier at any time in your life, probably mostly in your older years. And I'm gonna read some of these to you. I think some of them are funny, but you know what? I think a lot of them are actually true. Number one, give away some money. 
that would be obviously to charity or maybe to someone on the street that you think might need it. Provide someone with a smile every day or praise someone, say something nice to someone. Just tell them maybe they look nice or they love their dress or love their purse. Just say something nice to someone every single day. Number three, buy experiences rather than things. And that would be tickets to a concert or uh, sign up for some cooking lessons, travel, something other than things that would give you a happy experience, you or a partner or a friend. Sit less, put a spring in your step. Well, that's that we can figure out. Plan something special for the end of a trip or the end of a night out something special to happen at the end. Now you can use your imagination for that one. How about taking a break from a favorite food? For instance, if you love chocolate or you love Brussels sprouts, take a break for a couple of weeks or a month from that favorite food. And when you have it again, you will love it more. My, that could be said for many things, couldn't it? We kind of do that sometimes with our favorite um, shows on Netflix. When we're binging, we say, oh, we're binging two or three of these a night. Let's take a break and then we'll get back to it. Okay, here's one. Cherish the ordinary moments. And that one I love because it could be just holding a child on your lap or giving a friend a hug something very simple but something that would be something cherishable now they're suggesting painting moose did that a couple of years ago he never painted in his life but decided he was going to give a whirl at paint by numbers and he absolutely loves it and gets a lot of joy out of it and they call these tricks or just quirky unusual things try some of them or even just one I love that one, and I try and do that one about saying something nice to a stranger that you might meet or can be someone that you know or love. Say something nice to make them happy every day and to make you happy too. Okay, so now we've heard all the statistics about the different ages of happiness and why you're not as happy in your younger years as you are in your older years. And a lot of that has to do with the stress levels dis uh, disappearing from your shoulders and enjoying the simple life a little better. But I'm gonna read some of them that might explain the whys a little bit better. It's all about time perspective. Instead of just panicking as you get older, you realize that you can adjust better to certain situa situations and you are learning to control them better because your cognitive ability as you get older is better to deal with your emotions. I, I guess I can understand that. You're not as hot-headed, you're not as impulsive, and you give yourself a little bit more time to think about things. Your emotional life, you have more control, and they've done studies on this, that as we grow older, we have more control over our emotional life. We social network better. When you're younger, you have uh, friends from your job, you have friends, acquaintances, and you, you tend to collect friendships. Whereas when you're older, you nurture better friends and family a lot better than you did when you were younger. Life events, life slows down. I guess they compared this with driving on a crowded road is a lot harder than driving on an empty road. As your life gets more simple, it's easier to adjust to certain situations and you're enjoying life a little bit better. Predictability, well, because we have 
gained wisdom and have been through so many situations, we can predict events and how we handle things based on things that have happened to us in the past. We become better at foreseeing certain events in the future, and we're better at dealing with the consequences of our behaviors. And planning better for life's experiences and the challenges that come up based on experience, once again, we uh, can handle a lot of future events and things that might happen. And learning new skills and coping with them. That's something we seem to do better. For instance, if you had a job that you didn't like, you would quit and leave it. If you were in a relationship that wasn't working, you would leave that relationship. Whereas when you're older, you have learned how to give things more time. You've learned that your emotions are more stable and that perhaps better solutions are there for you. So these are just some of the whys. Happiness is not something concrete. It's something that you create and something that you choose. I'm gonna tell you one survey that was done in 2017. And I particularly really got a kick out of this one. They actually did a study and this was done by the British National Health Service. And they got it down to the exact age that women are the happiest. And you know what that age is? 85. What do you think of that, Moose? They based it on self-confidence, emotional stability, and health. Hello, 85. By the way, I do want to thank you all so very much for all your comments and opinions on the question that I asked you in the last video to help me choose my outfit for the 1920s, Roaring Twenties Gala coming up. Most of you chose that jacket, the black one that I wore, the first one. A lot of you love the red, like Moosey. I did too, but I do think that most of you were right, that the first one was comfortable, and I appreciate all the, all of the comments. And, and by the way, there was one comment that I do have to mention. We were talking about that beautiful wine-colored exotic iris that comes from the bulbs that were sent to us from Idaho from our son's friend. And one lady said, and I can't remember who it was, so tell me again who you were. Smell it, and if it smells like root beer, then it's called, and I forget the, the biological name of it. Well, guess what? I did go out that day. I smelled that iris and I couldn't believe it. It smelled exactly like root beer. So isn't it hysterical? I, I do remember smelling bark up in Big Bear when we had a home up there. The elderly couple that lived next door taught us that if you smell the bark of different old trees, it has different smells. And some of those big pine trees up in Big Bear smelled like vanilla. So I guess there is something to that. So thank you again for all the comments. I haven't had a chance to respond to everyone yet, but I do appreciate it. Well, that's it. I know we all have our aches and pains. Well, that's not entering into all of this, really. Find the good things in life. And we'll talk again soon. I do have another good video coming up next. And I think the teacher is going to come out in me. I have a book review to do that is not, a, not only a book that you can read to your children, those of you in your 40s, 50s, or beyond, but something you can read to your grandchildren. And the lessons in this book 
are something that you yourself can learn from and take to heart. So stay tuned for the next video. I love you all. Mothers and grandmothers and great grandmothers have a very happy Mother's Day. Daughters and granddaughters, so many mothers. And even those of you who are mommies to pets and animals, happy Mother's Day. God bless us all. Bye for now.